She's doing another Understanding a Fell video, Frank. I know, Hank. What is it this time? Monocytes. Hmm. Hi, everyone. I'm Stephanie, and welcome to HeMed. Today, we are going to further develop our skills in identifying hematology cells with a look at the monocyte. The monocyte, or monos, make up approximately 2 to 11% of the total white cell population in the peripheral blood. They derive from the same progenitor as the neutrophil, the GMP. The stages of the monocyte are the monoblast, promonocyte, and monocyte. You should only ever see the mature monocyte in the peripheral smear. If you see any of the immature forms, a disease process should be investigated. On the smear, the monocyte is typically larger than the neutrophil because they tend to get spread out in the slide making process. As per the sixth edition of Rodax hematology textbook, the nucleus may be round, oval, or kidney shaped, but more often deeply indented, horseshoe shaped, or folded on itself. In layperson's terms, the nucleus looks like whatever it wants to. The chromatin in the nucleus will be looser than other WBCs. Nucleoli are generally seen using an electron microscope. The cytoplasm is blue-gray with fine azure granules that give it a ground glass appearance. Cytoplasmic pseudopods may be visible. Cytoplasmic and nuclear vacuoles may also be present. Unlike neutrophils, there are no pools of mature monocytes in the bone marrow. When a monocyte matures, it is released immediately into the circulation. Therefore, if the bone marrow recovers from marrow failure, the monocytes are seen in the peripheral blood before neutrophils, causing a monocytosis. Monocytes are actually slightly immature cells, with their ultimate goal being to enter tissues and become macrophages. You will see in numerous textbooks the term monocyte slash macrophage being used because the functionality of the two are very similar, but the monocyte is in the blood and macrophages are in the tissues. Monocyte macrophages have numerous functions. Number one, innate immunity. They can recognize a wide assortment of bacterial pathogens and can produce nitric oxide, which is cytotoxic against viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, helminth, and tumor cells. They can also ingest foreign organisms and material that have been coated in antibodies or complement components. Number two, adaptive immunity. Macrophages act as antigen presenting cells. They can interact and activate both T and B lymphocytes. Number three, housekeeping. Monocytes can remove debris and dead cells at sites of infections or tissue damage. They destroy aging cells such as RBCs and maintain the storage pool of iron for erythropoiesis. In the peripheral blood, monocytes ingest activated clotting factors, which limit the coagulation process. Monocytes are also part of the process to synthesize a variety of proteins, such as coagulation factors, complement components, interleukins, growth factors, and enzymes. So today, we learned about monocytes, how to identify them on the slide, and their many functions in the body. In the next video, we will look at the other myeloid series of white blood cells. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Subscribe for future content. References available in the description box. Thank you for watching. Until next time.